Google unveiled a ton of new hardware yesterday. We got new Pixel phones, we got a slick looking Chromebook, a mesh Wi-Fi system, next generation Pixel Buds, and more. Each of these devices are interesting in their own ways, but if there's one thing Google really wanted us to understand, it's how some of them draw inspiration from a big concept the company is pursuing, ambient computing. It's a pretty big subject, but when Google's hardware chief, Rick Osterloh, was laying out the concept yesterday, he said that ultimately, Google wants to build a single consistent experience at home, at work, or on the go whenever you need it. The goal then, in a sense, is that the hardware you buy, like your Pixel 4 and your Nest Mini, form a sort of ever-present computing fabric that's always available and always ready to help you get something done. The devices themselves just sort of fade into the background. They're not the point. The point is to make sure that Google is there around you to help. As you might have guessed, Google's Assistant is a huge part of that strategy. I mean, for years now, we've been able to ask it for something and have it deliver information, control smart home devices, and even crack bad jokes. To make it easier for people to work with, Google improved how Assistant functions on the Pixel and the Nest Mini. For the former, Google shrunk down some of its huge speech recognition and understanding models to the point where they fit directly on the phone. That means getting results from Google Assistant happens much faster on a Pixel 4. The Nest Mini now also packs a dedicated AI chip that allowed Google to move some of its Assistant features away from its data centers and into these $50 smart speakers. In the US, at least, the Nest Mini also learns your more frequently used commands and sort of internalizes them so that next time they'll run a little bit faster. If you're looking for a seamless assistant help all the time then, I mean, hey, just invest in some new Pixel Buds while you're at it. Part of Google's approach here also involves standardizing some of the ways you use its products. The Pixel now has Motion Sense, which uses those tiny solely radar systems to recognize hand motions and convert them into on-device actions, like silencing alarms and skipping tracks in Spotify. The Nest Mini does something sort of similar with an ultrasound emitter that detects when your hand is nearby and turns on some lights to let you know where the capacitive volume buttons are. It's early days, but it's not hard to imagine the rest of Google's hardware eventually getting these kinds of motion-sensitive features. Google's vision definitely sounds convenient, but it is also far from flawless. Living in the sort of ambient computing wonderland Google is trying to build means living with microphones and sensors like that Soli radar and the Nest's ultrasonic emitter, devices that can tell when a person is around. The very idea doesn't sit right with some people, and they have reason to be concerned. It wasn't that long ago that Google and others were caught farming out assistant voice recordings to human contractors, which caught many users by surprise. All companies, no matter how trustworthy and diligent they seem, are fallible. And whether we're aware of it or not, we're offering loads of data about ourselves to Google and everyone else. The potential for misuse or mishandling can never truly be eradicated. For now, all we can really do is wait to see how Google continues to build on these ambient computing ambitions and see if the results are worth the possible risk. We're gonna to continue to keep an eye on Google's plans in this space, so for more, be sure to subscribe to Engadget, and as always, thanks for watching.